This tape is going to show both the life cycle of the honeybee and the life cycle of varroa mite. We begin here with the honeybee egg. The honeybee worker exists as an egg for the first three days of its life. The queen honeybee lays about 1,500 eggs a day, and within the third day again, the egg hatches to form the small larvae you see here. The honeybee will exist as a larvae for the next few days, basically through seven and a half days. With time, the adult worker bees will begin feeding this larvae, and you can see the royal jelly in the bottom of the cell here. The larvae continues to eat and eat and eat, and it grows. And the critical point for varroa you'll see later is the varroa mite has to get into the brood cell before it's capped. And again here you see a growing larvae. This larva would be about day four to day five in age. Now this is the point where varroa mite must enter the brood cell. The larvae is fairly large and robust and the mite sneaks in between the cell wall and the larvae and gets in the brood food. Within about 15 hours of this stage, the cell starts to be capped by the adult worker bees on the outside. And in the next sequence, you'll see the fully capped cell, brood cell. Now, if varroa mite has not entered the cell at this point, it has to wait for another cell uh, to enter. Now, once the cell is capped, the honeybee will continue its metamorphic development. And within the first 24 hours, it goes from a larvae to this prepupa that you see here. And during this transformation, the honeybee larva spins a cocoon and then sheds its larval skin and becomes the prepupa. The next sequences you see are roughly 24 hour intervals. This would be about day 12 in the honeybee's development, and we call this the wide eyed pupa. This again is about day 13. We call this the pink eyed stage. This is early day 14. We call this a purple eyed pupa. And in the next sequence or so, the major changes you see are changes in pigmentation of the bee's cuticle. Especially, you'll notice first around the mouth parts and antennal sockets. You'll see tanning. That's what you see in this sequence here. This bee pupae is at about day 16. Uh, the body has an evenly tan or gray appearance about it. And you can actually see some movement of the legs. Um, beneath it, you see the body moving. This is caused by movement of the legs. This is about day 18, 17 to 18, let's say. This is the black-headed bee stage. It's kind of a greasy, wet appearance. And finally, at about 19 and a half days after the egg is laid, the worker honeybee chews out of its cell. And if a mite is in the cell, it'll be liberated at the same time, riding out of the cell with the worker bee. So again, this is the life cycle of the honeybee. Now we'll go to the life cycle of the varroa mite. Just to remind you, the varroa mite has to enter the cell about 15 to 20 hours before it is capped by the adult worker bees. Roughly, that's a larvae of this age would be the host for that mite. The mite crawls down behind the larvae and cell wall and embeds itself in the royal jelly, the remaining brood food in the cell. And it turns itself upside down and has breathing tubes that allow it to, to respire while it's in the larval food. As soon as the larval bee chews or finishes eating all of its brood food, it liberates the mite, and this allows the mite to begin taking its first blood meals off of the prepupa bee, which you see here. Now usually this feeding begins on about the ninth or tenth day of the honeybee's life cycle, and it's at this stage that the mite will lay its first egg. And this is the first egg of a varroa mite shown here on the upper part of the cell wall. Other things you see in the cell Immediately below the egg is a mass of white material. This is the shed larval skin of the honeybee. And this first egg of varroa mite is the male egg. Um, she will lay eggs at 30 hour intervals from here on out and the remaining eggs will be female. Now this sequence is a little longer because I want to show you something else about varroa mites that uh, can be diagnostic in looking for disease. Um, varroa mites defecate frequently in the cells and their feces has a white appearance to it and you'll actually get to see a mite defecate in this sequence. And right here, you see a dorsal ventral movement of the abdomen and a white fluid was uh, ejected from the body of the mite. Well, this is the feces of the mite. Okay, this egg, this first male egg, will hatch about day 12. And here, looking at this pupa, you see some white flakes near the mouth parts on the cell wall. 
This is dried feces from mites. So this is a clear indication that this cell is infected with a varroa mite. Now I'll remove this pupae, and you can see there's also feces often found on the, on the body wall of the honeybee. When we flip this pu pupae over, we find a male mite stuck to its surface. This is a tiny protonymph of the male. At this stage of development, it's very difficult to distinguish male mites from female mites. Uh, we magnify this male a little closer just to show you some more of his detail. And this is about 200x. Now we're going to look at a mite family a little later in development. This again is about day 14 of the mites, uh, of the honeybees development. And when I remove this pupae, you'll see a female mother mite at the bottom of the screen, and then you see five white progeny mites. Uh, again, at this stage of development, it's very difficult to distinguish males from females. I'm going to remove this family from its cell and put them on a microscope slide, and I'm going to try and show you a male and female mite. Here are the five progeny just laid out, and here are the male and female mites. To your left bottom is the male mite, and up to the your right top is the female mite. The male is actually a young dudonymph, and that's what you see here. And although it looks like he only has six pair of legs, or six legs, he actually has four legs, four pair of legs. And then this is the female mite. She's more oval in shape at this stage of development. She is a protonymph. We'll look at another mite family, a little older. This would be about day 16. And what you see here is a young female dudonymph. You see she's finally changed her shape to look more oval, like, her, like she will as an adult. And then right above her, I've placed a male adult male mite. And you can see he has a tan color. And one of the distinguishing features besides the general shape of the mite is the use of the front legs. The male's first pair of legs tend to be used more like antenna. And they're very moved around rapidly. And it's these legs that he uses to transfer sperm to the female during mating. I've kind of injured him here when I moved him, but you can see how he uses those front legs. A little bit later, you can see all the mite feces in this cell indicating a large family of mites. And um, in this sequence, you'll actually get to see mating of, of between progeny mites. So when I remove the bee pupae, um, this is the mite family we find. Basically, you have one mother adult mite and two adult daughters. Those are the reddish ones you see running around. And then in the center of the cell, you see a female mite that's being mated by her brother. And this couple is in the unnatural mating position. They fell when I removed the bee pupae to the cell floor. This is not the usual mating position. Next to them is an immobile dudonymph female. And this just shows you just before these mites molt, they go through an immobile stage. And then they shed their cocoons. And you see two pieces of cocoon in the cell. Now a little later, these mites got stood up and went to the natural mating posture that you see on the cell wall now. And you can see the female is standing there with her third and fourth legs open, and this allows the mite to transfer sperm using his legs. And if a mite, a female mite does not mate after this point, she won't mate for the rest of her life. So this is a critical period for the mite. This is just another glimpse of the family. You can see the shed pupil skins, I mean the mite skins, off to the left. The larger skin is from a female mite, the smaller skin is from the male mite when he became an adult. Finally, the honeybee chews out of its cell at day 19 and a half, and the living mother mite and any of her mature daughters will leave the cell with this bee. Now, a varroa mite is doing lucky if just one of her daughters matures and makes it out of the cell. Uh, typical averages from around the world have been 1.1 progenies ma actually mature. The fate of the rest is they simply die. In this cell, you see a dead male mite to your right, and at the bottom of the cell, you see a dead female mite. And then you see a bunch of debris related to the adult bee. Sometimes mites get trapped beneath the cocoons of larval honeybees. That's what you see here. We call this entombed by the cocoon. And I've just removed the cocoon out of the cell. You can still see the impression of the mite that's trapped beneath it. I'll separate them in the next sequence to show you, yes, this really is a mite. And there it is. Now, this happens in very low frequencies most of the time. But we have a resistant stock of bees where this happens 80% to 100% of the time, which is, could be a very important resistance mechanism. 
In this sequence, you see a little bit of the feeding uh, puncture that's caused from the mites on the honeybee's body wall. It's, it's a blemish in the upper, let's say, upper left of the body. It's a puncture wound. And finally, this is just a sequence to show you that we're able to paint mites in part of our research so we can follow them and their behavior in their lives.